Hello and happy Fridays. Welcome and joining the channel. This is Fridays with Brandon and today this is going to be episode number 67 of Flute Fridays. And today what we're going to go over is I had a customer ask me this week about an application with a thermal imager. What they needed to do was set it up and they were actually going to have somebody monitor it because they wanted to turn something off if it got too hot real quick. So they wanted to set up a camera on a tripod and then watch a monitor. And if one got too hot, quickly identify that and be able to see that. So I'm going to kind of talk through uh, some applications and some mental gymnastics I went through to make this application to where I think it could actually work really well with either the TIX 580 or the TI 480 Pro. So in this situation, the customer said they don't just have a single um, use case where they need to monitor. They actually need to look at like eight or 16 different screens at the same time and they wanted them to be able to stream to a single screen and then have somebody monitor that screen and then see if something gets too hot. So there's gonna be some other applications that might play into this today as we go through it, but I wanna go through the, the, the solution to the problem that I came up with, see if you guys have a better solution, um, but I think this one will work for, for the customer. And the other thing is we're gonna have a Q&A session there at the end um, for a couple questions from last week. So, first thing, as I said, okay, you need eight to 16 different cameras set up, and you need to see them all on the same screen. Well, how do you do that? Uh, our software doesn't really do split screen with these cameras and being able to do that live streaming. So, what you can do is both of these cameras have an HDMI out port, and I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see HDMI right here on the TIX580, full-size HDMI um, output. And then for the TI-480 Pro, you see we have an HDMI mini output. So either one of these will stream to an HDMI source for it. So we can take multiple cameras, four, eight, 16, however many. And what there's something, you can buy it off of Amazon, less than a hundred bucks, it's called a multi-viewer, HDMI multi-viewer. So you can put four inputs of HDMI sources into it and then it outputs a single HDMI to your screen, to your TV or to your monitor or whatever you have. That allows you to see four screens or split the screen into fourths um, on a single screen. If you had a really big screen and I haven't tested this out but I can't imagine why it wouldn't work, uh, what you could do is you could buy, if you wanted to do 16, let's say, that's a lot of screen. You'd have to have a pretty big TV to be able to actually see what you're looking at for uh, 16 different, if a screen is split up 16 ways. But what you can do is you could do buy, what would that be? Four, you would buy five multi, multi-viewer, HDMI multi-viewers, Four of those multi-viewer screens, each of those would receive four inputs from cameras, and then the output of each of those would go into the final one, and then those initial four would split the screen into fourths, and then all of that, that output would then be split into fours again. And that would allow you to get 16 different uh, thermal images all on the same screen at one time. That's kind of pushing the limit. I think maybe eight would be better or even four, uh, but it's up to you guys. So look up multi HDMI multi-viewer. That's how I think you could get it into a screen if you're gonna sit there and actually monitor and watch. But if we're sitting and monitoring and watching, we can see that if you had, if you had a bunch of um, screens here and they were all like this color, and you were trying to look for a threshold, especially if you were in auto mode, see how it kind of goes green to uh, bluish, or I didn't, I shouldn't have said green, yellow to bluish, or dark purple on here. And, but we're going from 70, almost 76 degrees to 70 degrees. But then when I put my hand in, it auto adjusts. Now it goes up to 88 degrees and down to 70 degrees. And it just adjusts the color palette. 
Well, if you were looking at a whole bunch of screens and they were all constantly changing color palettes, even if something got hot, it'd be really hard to identify. So I'm gonna show you how you could set it up in a way, like I have this camera, where it looks, looks visual, but when something comes into play, boom, you get a bright red screen. And I'm not in focus for this close, so just a sec. Okay, so you want it to look more like this, where you have just visual light, and then the moment something above that temperature threshold comes into play, it's a bright red, and it's obvious right away. So that if you were looking at a screen, oh, a multi-split screen, and they all were like this, and they had visual, and then something above that came into play, and it was bright red like this, it'd be really easy and obvious to see. So I'm gonna show you how you could set up your camera to do that, okay? So, if we're going from this TI-480 Pro settings into this setting, let's show us how we would do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is, we're going to, well, the very first thing we're gonna do, instead of auto range, we're gonna wanna do manual range. The way you can do that shortcut is hold down F1, and you see up there, that just went to manual. If I held it down again, look right there, auto. We wanna be in manual, okay? And you can see in this one, we're from 80, just over 80 degrees to 63 degrees. So how do we adjust that? By going left and right. So 83 to 60, if we look down here, I'm trying to get that further apart. Okay, 80, sorry, I should kill this thing, get it out of here. I'll at least move it for us right now. Okay. So 80. I'm just hitting the left arrow right now to make the... Oh, I'm sorry, hitting the left arrow and going the wrong direction. Hitting the right arrow. And then if I hit up and down, I can go down to 80. 80.6 to 63. Ah, beautiful. Now we're 80.6.63. Okay, so we've got that. Now, no matter what comes into the field, this yellow, if anything's above that yellow, it's gonna be a saturated color of green right now. And if it's below it, it's gonna be like a gray. But all of these across the board, you'd have the same color yellow would mean the same temperature if you had multiple cameras. Okay, so that's good, it's not gonna auto. The next thing to enhance our ability is look at image and something called, we're looking for alarm color, there we go. Now we're gonna turn the alarm color on for high, and we're gonna set that at, okay, done. Now we need to go back in here, alarm color, and we need to set our alarm color. See right now it's at 86, so we wanna make that, um, 80, let's make it 80 degrees, 81, that's good, okay, so now when it comes into play, but my hand's green right now, well, if it's an emergency, we don't want green, green means go, we want red to scream at us, so let's see if we can play with that, so we go into settings, and then we go down, and I believe it's advanced, because we're advanced kind of people, um, maybe it's not. Let me see. Nope. See, it's image. We're looking for something called saturation color. Mm. Saturation colors. Okay. Do you see that? It's under palette, standard, down here at the bottom, saturation colors. Instead, let's do red, blue. And now when it comes into play, woo, it's red, okay? So, if you do those settings, you can quickly see if anything comes into play, it instantly becomes a big red blob for us. And if you use the HDMI out and a multi-viewer, you could do multiple cameras at the same screen at the same time, and you're only gonna be limited by how far the HDMI cables can run. Uh, before they lose signal and I'm not sure what I'm not an expert on HDMI cables 
Google that yourself, okay? Uh, it, it is a mini HDMI cable for the pistol grip version, the 480 Pro, and you'll see it comes with one with an HDMI mini cable that goes to a full size. Uh, you can use this, it's probably about six, seven feet long, or you could buy an adapter from a mini to a standard and then use a longer cable to get to the first mini uh, multi-viewer and then the output of that to your screen. Sorry about that interruption, uh, or this interruption, I should say. Well, I'm going to, I forgot about one thing when I was filming with the camera, so I wanted to show you this. Another thing you could do to increase uh, the application or the solution with this application that I like is the idea of auto capture. So instead of just seeing and telling the person, hey, something's going wrong, also documenting what's going on when that happens. So when it goes above that threshold that you care about, that you not only see it as the, you know, the person watching the screen, but the camera starts capturing images so that you have documentation for letter later to send to whoever the manufacturer was. If you were like in a boot up session, you wanted to get, see, see what was going on. So a feature that you can also add again, I didn't go through it in the, the video when I have the cameras in front of me, but it's very simple. You can use auto capture. So a couple things you're going to want to do, you're going to want to set the interval. Once we hit that threshold and we want to start capturing, do we want to capture every second or every 10 seconds? I would say every five to 10 seconds is probably going to be good if you're going to be monitoring it anyways, and then you're going to be able to see that start capturing. So you're going to set your interval. The next thing you're going to do in this application is you can set a temperature trigger. So you can set a high temperature trigger. So in the case with my hand going in front of it at 81 degrees, we could set the temperature trigger at 81 degrees. So the moment my hand goes in front of there, not only do we see a red hand uh, on the screens, but the camera itself starts capturing images every 10 seconds uh, that there is that red hand in the picture or in another case, an electrical component started heating up beyond whatever threshold that was. So hope that's helpful. Back to the other video. Okay. I hope that's kind of fun. Uh, that tested my brain power this week to try to figure out an application for that. And I thought it would be fun to share with you guys. The next thing we have is some Q and A. So Bob, I'm going to butcher his last name. So I'm not even going to say it, but Bob asked the question, and it was on the thermal, uh, the video I did on thermal imaging training, uh, episode number 65. He says, good to know about the training courses. I'm interested in a mega course. So I wanted to just bring to your attention that Fluke has a bunch of, well, I say a bunch. They have several uh, training courses online. Some are free, some are paid for. And you can go to fluke.com, especially in, I don't know about other countries, but in the US, go to fluke.com and under resources um, or learn, one of the two, and then there's learn, and then there's courses in there. I'm gonna leave the link that goes directly to the courses and you can see the thermal imaging courses, uh, insulation tester courses, because this guy was interested in quote unquote mega courses, meaning insulation tester. So you can see insulation tester, multimeter courses, uh, motor and drive courses, so there's a lot of different uh, courses that are available, most of which are free right now. Some are paid for like the thermal imaging. You can see what those options are, okay? The other question I had was a, flu a video that I made with the 754, that's the documenting process calibrator, that'll do temperature and pressure, but you have to use hand pumps on the pressure, and the 729, which is the automatic pressure where you just type in the pressure and it's gonna pump up to that pressure. And it's episode number 61 and it said, which is better? And that's a really tough question to answer. Uh, the, the question or the answer is it depends, right? And that's, that's a very, you know, politically correct answer, but it's the right answer. And it depends because if you're doing all pressure and you're doing a lot of pressure, the 729 is a much better option. You got the automatic pressure in there. You can crunch through it. Or if you're doing all pressure, but you're doing a little bit of temperature, very, very little temperature, and you don't really need it to the documenting capability, then the 729 might be better. If you say, well, I have almost all temperature and some pressure, 
and I need, I have to document everything and I can't afford both, then the 754 is better because the 754 can do all your temperature uh, and it can calibrate it and document it and it can do pressure, but you're gonna have to use a hand pump or generate your own pressure. Now that takes a little more energy and work. So best case scenario, you know, if you're like a refinery or something, you've got a lot of temperature and pressure, then you would get both, right? Because they're both gonna to talk to the same software. I actually just got off the phone with some of the software guys today over at Prime Technologies called um, ProCal V5, and it can do all sorts of cool things and help you get more out of your Fluke tool. It can talk to your SAP program and all sorts of things. Um, so it's pretty cool. You just load in all the uh, calibrations you wanna do, and then into the 754 or the 729, Go do your calibrations, bring it back, dump the results back into the software, it'll dump them up into the cloud. It's pretty slick. So, um, anyways, I hope that was helpful. We kind of got more technical and really a uh, weird application this week, but it was kind of fun. And if you guys have any questions, leave them below. I love those questions and love to get to them. The other thing is, if you watch more than three videos, I'm going to remind you, go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, that helps us get out there to the world and... Have a great weekend. Take care.